Shalom, welcome to our Friday afternoon class, or talk, if you will, uh, on Zohar, uh, connected with Shabbat, hopefully. And today, you know, in Parshat Pekude, which is the end of Sefer Shemot, and it is um, really a, a conclusion of the whole redemption cycle, God is giving the Jewish people the Mishkan, the portable temple that they're going to use to serve him th for thousands of years. And this temple, we are told in the Kabbalah, follows a pattern of building, of structure, of order, that corresponds to the upper worlds. And it also corresponds to the structure of man. Now that structure, we can see it in the details in the Kodesh Kodeshim, which is the, the holy place in the mind, the sanctified place in your mind where only you and God can go. And it you have, and the Kohen Gadol only goes there once a year. Then you have the, the Eichal, the palace within where they bring the bread offerings and the incense offering, and they light the menorah, which of corresponds, of course, to the, the lower part of the brain that deals with the organs of the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the nose. And then we go outside the, into the first courtyard, the Ezrat Kohanim, the courtyard of the, of the priests where the big sacrifices are, are taking place. And that's the heart is considered, the, the heart of the Beit HaMidosh is considered the, the, the altar where, you know, fire is not allowed to ever go out. Because if the heart ever goes out, <laughs> so does the soul. So and and so on and so forth. The structure of man and the Mishkan, all of, both of them reflect each other, and they also reflect the levels of the upper worlds. So we see from here that God is building something in a very precise way. Now, I think I noticed it by myself and maybe in other people that a lot of people that believe in Hashem still don't get the precision of the way that God runs the world. You know, people will tell you, oh, I believe in God, sure, but God's good, I believe in him, I'm good with that, and I believe in the Ten Commandments, I believe in Moses, etc., etc., but it's the precision of the artist that makes the artist special. There are millions of painters and millions of writers and millions of musicians, and they're all pretty good on various levels, but the ones who get to the highest levels, they're very precise with what they do. There's not one note out of place in the symphony, not one brush stroke that impedes on the totality of the picture. And the same with writers, or poetry and, and narrative, etc., that, that, you know, one word can throw a person off in a book and it ruins the, 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 the moment of attachment to the idea. See, so God is precise beyond our understanding of precision, and that's his perfection. And he replays his perfection in his creative process. Okay, and so we see here in the creation of the Mishkan, in the service of this, this portable temple, he is playing out the structure that he worked out in heaven, in earth. And instead of using the energy fields and, and frequencies of divine energy that are, are clearly apparent if you make a trip to heaven, right, those energy fields become the, the physical items and arranged and according to the, the Mishkan. And so the spiritual becomes physical. But it also happens to us. So we are creations in his image. And he created his image <laughs> in order to create us. You see, and so when we repeat the structural patterns of the Mikdash and of the upper worlds, we translate his light further into the world. See, it's called the affinity of form, that when we are become a form that is matim in Hebrew, that is, uh, how do you translate matim? Uh, appropriate, but it's uh, there's another word for it in English. It's not just appropriate, it's matching form, really. When our form matches God's form, then our form translates his light. And when we don't can form to the form, then we can't translate the light. Now, when you do translate the light, you become an artist you, of your life. 
and an artist of of beautiful things in the world. But even if you're not a painter, a musician, or a writer, but you're just a regular p person, I mean, I don't believe in regular people. I think everybody's talented and, and special. But when you find that, then your life translates it, and people know it, and they feel it, and they sense it about you. Okay, so the Mishkan that we're talking about here in Parsha Pekude of the Zohar is... is also telling us about the Torah and its structure also patterns is patterned after this divine form and it tells us that uh, that bring Rabbi Chia brings a verse a famous verse right from King Solomon that all the rivers run to the sea and the sea is never filled well we know the sea is never filled because it's emptying somewhere else where is it emptying so Rabbi Chia comes along, and the Chidush, of course, is, is that the, these rivers are rivers of inspiration. These are rivers from heaven that are coming from God's mind into our minds. And if we catch them, if we have the vessel to catch them, and, and so those rivers become the, the channels of the secrets of the Torah and the secrets of the structure of creation, the secrets of angels, the secret, secrets of the chariots, the secrets of the palaces, all the different levels of understanding of of heaven become a are a mapped understanding of this world as well and metaphorically we are in this relationship with the, these powers whether we know it or like it or not and so Rabbi Chia is just r helping us understand when it says that all the rivers run to the sea and the sea is not filled the sea is filled but it's pouring out into a new a new level, which is the sp the physical realm, where man receives in his mind the inspirations of heaven on earth. And that's, by the way, why two people on different sides of the planet can have the same great idea and invent the same project uh, pro product at the same time. Because when the rivers open and flow with with inspiration, whoever has a vessel at that time and place will receive something of it. Now, if you have a bigger vessel, you'll receive more. And if you're Einstein, you'll get a deeper and broader and more and more precise mathematical understanding of the idea of e equals mc squared. But other people understand that 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 idea intuitively. They get that idea because they're aligned to the light. Now, so what I think a big part of our frustration in life is that we don't achieve our potential. And our potential is this relationship where we become, we subsume the divine form and then life becomes inspirational. And then we, we, we love to create, we love to give, we love to do. And I'm not taken down by depression and, and failures and disappointments. They come along. They have to come along because they're my teachers. But they don't knock me off the path. They don't knock you off your game. We just got to pick ourselves up and get back to what we know, which is following the divine form of God through the Torah and the mitzvot that he's given us. Now, in this Parsha, when we look further and deeper, and he talks about the Mishkan, he says, he brings another famous verse from the Chumash itself, from the creation story, <clears throat> and it connects it to the Mishkan, and he says, hey, Eile, these are the generations of the heaven and the earth. Now, the word generation doesn't really, in English, doesn't service the word of toledot. Toledot means not just generations. It means ideas that produce ideas that produce ideas for thousands of years. So toledot are causes and effect relationships of the mind of God that gets expressed to man in this world. And so when the Torah tells us these are the generations of the heavens and the earth, it's what is the what does the Zohar say? All these generations shahasu that were made, votsiu, that were brought out from heaven and into the earth, kulam bakoch oto or they're all from the original light of the creative process. So you see, it doesn't matter where you stand in the chain, you're still receiving the same light. And you're still connected to the beginning. And that's hugely important when you want to understand time. Because we are not bound by time, we are in time. But our soul is from the beginning of time. And and it should ignaz ba'asu v'yatsu. And the original light was hidden. 
because God saw the evil people would take the original light and abuse it. So he hid it away for those who would be in awe of God and keep his Torah and mitzvot and keep at least the Ten Commandments, you know, which all human beings understand and can accept. And then you align and you receive that hidden light. And that makes you that creative, powerful person in the world. If just only in your whole life, you don't have to be president of anywhere, right? You don't have to be CEO of your company, just uh, you know, where you work, be, and, and that proves your worth. No, your worth is in the, the, the evidence of your everyday joy and in life itself and what you give to others in that way. Now, Kulam Bahochma Oto Or, and all of them are in the wisdom and the power of that original light. And it came out of Pekudea Mishkan, and the, the, the commands of the Mishkan were also built from this light. So you're connecting to what we said before, the affinity of form of the Mishkan and the commands that were originally given to Moses to build that structure. Well, we're also that structure, so we're, we're connect, connecting back to it. But <clears throat> Minayan, Lano, how do we know this? It's written, B'Tzalel ben Ori ben Chor. Right, B'Tzalel, who was the son of Ori, which who was the son of Chor, who was the son of Miriam the prophet goes all the way back to the family of Moses, Lamate Yehuda. Well, no, that that would not be accurate because Mate Yehuda is um, Hor is not from uh, the the tribe of Levi. Excuse me, it's from the tribe of Yehuda. And and Miriam, but Miriam, yes, Miriam, the mother of Hor, was from Yehuda, but her husband Levi, not Levi, but their husband. Um, Yish- <laughs> was he she was married in from the tribe of Levi excuse me i'm getting it mixed up see the generations get they, they get mixed up over time it's okay well betzalel but the point of the czar here is that betzalel the son of or the son of hor or the son of hor is giving us the generations of betzalel to show us that betzalel wasn't just acting in a vacuum of inspiration the Betzalel was receiving from his father and his grandfather and all the way back to the tribe of Yehuda, which is, of course, J- J- Yehuda, the son of Jacob. And and this transmission is representing this power of the generations to connect to your teacher and your teacher's teacher and your teacher's teacher's teacher all the way back. That brings you in touch with that original light that we were talking about, who mitzad ayamin. And this is coming from the side of kindness, of the expansion of the light. And ve'elu, ve'ol, acholiyav, and acholiyav, who worked with Bitzalo in the creating the Mishkan, he was from the left side. And he was the, always we have to have a right and a left, because the one represents the light, and one represents the vessel that holds it. So acholiyav represents the vessel that holds the light of Bitzalo, and they work together to build the Mishkan, you mean Usmo. Well, Mishka mitzad you mean Usmo, because the Mishkan is the representation of the unification of these two extremes of the expansion of light and the contraction of light. And the, the we live in, in the tension and the perfect balance of those two lights, the light that holds and the light that expands. And this is, Hukam a Mishkan and Asei Moshe Shaya B'nehem Hukim Oto. Right, so then the Mishkan was established and built by Moses because he stood at the very fulcrum, the very center of these two powers, the ability to bring new light into the world and the ability to give it vessels. And, and therefore he bridges the right and the left and creates the center column, which is why he's the greatest prophet of all. Because we have to be able to bridge the two extremes of the new idea and how to bring it in the world. And when you do that, you become like the artist, God, and, and you become the perfect apprentice of his light. So I think that, that Shabbat is the time that we don't create, but it's actually a time that we look back on what we have created and what we look at our week. And what did we do this week that was creative? What did we give to others and, into, and bring into the world this week that makes a little difference? It doesn't take much. It might be one good word to one person that's in a bad mood, and then you've changed the world. So don't try to measure how much, but rather how good. <laughs> it makes a big difference. And you'll get a lot of pleasure out of what you do. 
and then you become a person that God can use in many, many useful, creative, powerful ways. Because the redemption is happening, we see it all around us, and even as the world is thrown into war, there many good things are on the way. we got to believe that and hold on to that idea. So have a great Shabbat, and we'll see you next week on all the platforms. Shabbat Shalom.